everybody. Welcome to the Talking Animation Podcast. And this is a show where we like to talk about obscure indie animated films and uh, and tell you a little bit about them and hope that you'll check them out. And today we're talking about a really special film from out of, is it France or Belgium? France. Well, yeah, yeah, France. We're talking about Ernest and Celestine, uh, which is such a cute, 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 cute film uh, about an unlikely friendship. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner, and and Stanford is here. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well, thanks. I'm really excited to talk about this film. This was so fun to rewatch. Yeah. It really was kind of a, because I've been so busy, I, I've had so much going on, that to put this on this morning and just be like, it's so relaxing. It's such a nice film. <laughs> <laughs> so it was nice. It's true, isn't it? It's just yes. I just had a smile on my face I think the entire time <laughs> I was watching it. Yes. And this came out in 2012 and it's directed by Stefan uh, Abier, Vincent Patar, and Benjamin Rainier. And it's based on a series of children's books. There's a Belgian author. Uh, and the illustrator named Gabriel Vincent, and they uh, they took the illustration style from the books and they made it into this animated film, and which is like, f- oh, go ahead, please, no, please, no, it just was so refreshing it, when you think about 2012 when you've got Frozen, you've got you know all of these big movies, and to have this like little quiet movie, exactly, it's just like the p- complete opposite. Of, of all these big American animated films. And it really did, to me, it felt like a children's book come to life. You know, it just, just, it just, yes. like the illustrations on the page were it's just, yeah, just we're, mo- we're moving, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and that was, I think, just part of the delight of it, too, is how much I love the art. You know, just, en- yeah. just enjoyed watching this beautiful hand drawn animation. Yeah, and we should say it, it came out in uh, in France in 2012. It came out everywhere else in 2013. So that's why it was up against Frozen <laughs> Yep, at the Academy Awards. So this was nominated uh, that year. They had Frozen, The Croods, Despicable Me 2, which I just can't believe that got nominated. <laughs> that's bonkers. They just <laughs> shake my head. <laughs> Ernest and <laughs> Celestine and The Wind Rises for 2013 uh and uh what a year no, really yeah. with, the, with the exception of although i know audiences love despicable me yes you know and all of its spinoffs it's probably the it's one of the worst ones though oh yeah no question yeah but but <laughs> you know the wind the wind rises yeah i mean what yeah. a what a movie you know and we covered that for talking animation a while yeah. back yeah. yeah it's a really it's a good one and uh and then uh of course yeah frozen one because it was such a such a epic movie that year i mean i think you could have had a case for that being nominated for best picture in 2013 because it was if you're certainly if you're talking about impact it was one of the most impactful movies of 2013 um, so, but we have this Ernest and Celestine, which is just this sweet, simple little movie. And it's just the story of an unlikely friendship between a bear, Ernest, and a young mouse named Celestine. So, so you had seen this before. Yeah, back, you know, to 10 years ago or whenever mm-hmm. uh, it was. And yeah. I think I, I think I saw it somehow on like a dvd or something you know i didn't mm-hmm. have i didn't see it or it was either that or i saw it at the broadway i'm trying to mm. remember you know which were, yeah uh, that that would track that would make sense this seems yeah. like the kind of thing the broadway would the have. broadway would have it's and, our art house theater here in salt lake if people are wondering right and and i can't i might have gone a screener rage i mean it's just it's a bit of a blur you know mm-hmm. 10 years ago I yeah. can't remember what I had for lunch today, let alone. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I digress. Yeah, I watched it for the first time when I did my did the right one win animated series uh, that I did uh, for on my channel. Yeah, where I went year by year each year from 2002 all the way up to the current year, uh, and I even did last year of an- the animated Oscars. Watched all of them, decided that the right one win, and 
So that was the first time that I watched it. I also covered it uh, for Family Movie Night. Uh, uh, I forget when. It was a couple of years ago. So I've covered it. This is like technically, I guess, the third time that I've covered it on uh, on this channel. It oh, nice. Was, okay. It was pretty er- early on for um, Family Movie Night. Way back in 2016, I covered it. Okay. Yeah, for Family Movie Night. So I have that review. And, uh, and I... I just really enjoyed it. It's a very sweet family film uh, with a simple message. And, uh, um, and I love the animation, of course. (laughs) And and so, yeah. So you enjoyed it the second time around. Oh my goodness. Yes. It's just, it's, it's just, it's so delightful. Just, just, you know, Mm -hmm. cute and breezy. And, and I, just as I already mentioned, I'm so crazy about the hand drawn mm-hmm. animation. It's it, it's it's just such a pleasure to watch for me. You know, and I keep yeah. keep wishing. If I, I during it, I was wishing. Oh, I wish Disney would do another hand drawn yeah, anime, you know, so. animated film or <laughs> some of these others. And you, you know, you never know they might. But yeah, but, uh, I was hoping that maybe they because you, you know at D twenty three they had those blue sky projects that were like pie in the sky dream projects or whatever and i was kind of hoping that maybe they might dangle a carrot out about uh because they've talked about brad bird doing one there's right. been different conversations and uh, and uh, that would be really really fun i mean i would love you know you've got this new studio that uh the laster and brad bird and and you know the whole thing i forget yeah. what's called sky dance or something dance Anyway, I would love for them to, what a way to like differentiate yourself and say, okay, we're going to come up, we're going to do an Iron Giant sequel or something. I don't know. Right. Right. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Holy smokes. (laughs) But speaking of sequels, I didn't even know when I picked this because I was just trying to think of something like short and easy and that, you know, I could fit in. But uh, there's actually a sequel coming next month for Innocent Celestine. Did you know this? No. Yeah, I just found out about this. Well, my friend on my friend on Twitter told me about it. It's called Ernest and Celestine 2, a trip to Gibberatia or something like that. How fun. Yeah. Uh, and it's coming to, I guess it's being released in France uh, next month. So I don't know when we'll get it, but it's kind of cool. Well, I hope G Kids is going to be on the case and we're going to yes. get, get it. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's fantastic. Mm hmm. Do you know and if it's the it, same creative team, Rach, or who? Uh... Let me check. Do do do. Let's see here. Let's see. It doesn't say it on the Wikipedia. Let's see on IMDb. No, it looks like different directors. Okay. So different team, but that'll be fun. I'll look forward to that. Are you a fan of Rachel's reviews? Do you look forward to Family Movie Night, Female Film Critics Panels, or the Talking Disney Podcast? If so, please consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron. As a patron, you get to access monthly events such as the watch alongs and Q&As, where you get to talk to stars and find out the behind the scenes of the movie making industry. And you can pick what I review for Family Movie Night or even become a guest on the podcast. Podcasts and YouTube channels are expensive and I really, really could use your help. I would so appreciate it. You also get to be a member of the Facebook group where we talk about all the films that we're seeing and we have so much fun. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies and select one of the Rachel's fan tiers. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. I feel like this movie has a lot of a feeling of Dumbo in it. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just, you know, the pacing, the charm, like the kind of the warm fuzzies you get yeah. from it. The level of action, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good comparison. Watercolor style. Yes. You mean, you basically, it's very similar. You have a mouse that's friends with an elephant. You have a mouse that's friends with a bear in this. So I think yeah. they're somewhat, I think they're somewhat similar. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. And so we start out with the the Celestine is in an orphanage, mouse orphanage, and Lauren Bacall voices the gray one. I love that it's Lauren Bacall. Yeah, this is really cool. Really cool. Have you seen 
I've only seen this English dub too. Have you? I don't know if it's available in, you know, <laughs> with uh, English sub. In our, you know, for us here in America, do you know? I'm or have sure you seen that it? it is. I didn't check on Tubi. It's you can watch it on Tubi. Yeah, I didn't check to see if you could watch it just with subtitles. Yeah, I was like, I think the only choice. Yeah, but and they do a really good job with this dub. It's I think because like you can't really see the mouse that well that it it works well. Yeah, agreed. You know, compared to like hum- a human face. Yeah, you know, it's different. And they picked. Good voices, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think it was the voice cast was solid. Yeah, and I just love Celestine because she's the one that the gray one says that the uh, warns about the big bad bears, and then tells these stories about the bear eating the raw mouse and things like that. And Celestine, she immediately says, "How can we be sure he's so bad?" And I, I liked that because I think that that's even though it might be kind of risky in a way because your kids might be more independent, which could be challenging if you have kids. But I think it's good to, to, to have for kids to, to ask questions and to not just absorb whatever is being told them, you know, as far as at school, at church, other places, you know, they should ask questions. They should think about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love I feel like some of the, like the opening scene, of course, reminds me of kind of a classic orphanage scene, like Oliver, even yeah. Annie, even Annie, kind of in mm-hmm. a way. Yeah. I just think that the little orphan mice are adorable. Yeah. Too, you know, just so they just, I just love how they capture them. They just feel like they're, you know, just cute and precocious little kids. They've got the evil, you know, the gray one. I mean, you know, the evil person over, overlooking, but they, but they, they overcome it. You know, I mean, they, they seem to. Anyway, I, 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 that put a smile on my face too. Yeah, this is really cute. The the adult mice are kind of gross looking. <laughs> I don't really like them with the buck teeth and everything. The buck teeth, and it's hilarious. <laughs> that, like if they lose one of their teeth, and then the, 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 like you know, their speech completely goes to pot. You know, <laughs> yeah, you, you can't understand what they say. <laughs> but there's the 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 mice are kind of the tooth fairy for the bears, even though the bears are are uh, you know their enemy. But uh, but for little little kids for for the bears, then they collect the teeth and they sell the teeth. Yeah. And there's like a whole teeth and in, in, emporium. Kind this of. is whole in, yeah. This is whole industry, right? <laughs> <And they're, laughs> which was. Very creative, all the you know world building and everything. I, I thought was a lot of fun. I thought so too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, and then uh, you kind of have these dual stories of of the the bear world and the mouse world. So it's not just the mice that are being told about Big Bad Bear. You have the uh, the bears that are being told about the mice too. Yeah. So that kind and, of parallel world, it's almost like like yeah. underground and above ground, right? That um, especially once we get to the courts and the, uh, you know, that, their, yeah, that yeah. court stuff. I'm excited to talk with you about that. Yes. Uh, and so Ernest, he's trying to kind of make a living. And I just I really enjoyed the sort of gruff nature of Ernest. And I found him very charming. Like, I think Forrest Whitaker does a really nice job as Ernest. And I've always just been a real sucker for that kind of like grumpy old man with a heart, with a heart of gold in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Story. I mean, I love up. It was one of my favorite movies. I, yeah. I really get it. I really enjoy Gran Torino. That's one I, I, I like a lot. And just those kind of stories. I, I really enjoy. Get off my lawn, maybe. Yeah. Get off my <laughs> <I'm kidding>. lawn. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. <laughs> uh, and I, I would think he kind of classifies as one of those type of characters. Very charming. Yeah. And funny. Gruff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, so he's a one-man band at the beginning, but they shut him down because he can't be loitering or begging, I guess. They shut him down even though he's not harming anybody by playing his music. And so then he's trying to figure out a way to make money, make an income. 
and he breaks into the candy store and uh, and with the help of Celestine who he meets and and part of the thing that makes Celestine so charming is that she's not scared of Ernest at all. She's just kind of like, what is wrong with you? Like, why, yeah. are you, why are you behaving this way? Yeah, we, we learn in the orphanage, right, that she, she's like, with that drawing that she makes, that, you know, she, yeah, she's not she's not scared of bears. She just thinks, yeah. why can't bears and mice happily coexist together? Yeah. Well, and it's, it was, it's really funny when she says that, uh, she, well, she's behind 50 teeth collecting the teeth and they, you know, they said, don't you want to be a dentist someday? And she says, I don't want to be a dentist. <laughs> so, so this is like <laughs> the opposite of Rudolph. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, she really wants to be a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And, uh, and then. Uh, I I just I really liked all of the. I'd be interested to look at the books sometime because I really liked all the world building and yeah, uh, the I little details the they too. put into the, the cities and uh, and you know things like the the tooth store and some of the other things that were really cute. Yeah, I was just thinking the same. Thing. I, was like, I need I need to go to some French bookstore because I want to find books. <laughs> you know how I saw at animation is film at the animation film festival little nicholas that french mm-hmm. film that was also based on the children's children's books and yeah and uh it had such a, it had a similar style to this too in a way you know just getting beautifully hand drawn and just so cute you know just cute and charming and happy and nothing too heavy and it was just so great yeah, yeah. So then we have uh, they he gets caught coming out of the the candy store he gets stuck and uh, and then they get in we need the poo of, style kind yeah, of doesn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they get in a little of quarrel uh, with each other uh, and and then uh, Celestine has this dream of uh, the big bad bear and I loved the way they used like shadows and light. Some of these sequences, really cool. Yeah. Um, I thought it was very effective. And, uh, but then, then you have Ernest comforting Celestine after a dream, which is very sweet. And he says, if you can do this, you can do anything. And he really encourages her in her drawings. So that was sweet. This is just a really nice movie about friendship. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, that, that segment where they're together and he's teaching her about art and whatnot and just kind of almost liberating her, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just just adorable. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's good for kids to not only see that they're like literally different species, but they're such like different personalities and different ages and yeah. different... All these different things, and I think that's good for kids to see that you can build a friendship with uh, with anybody. You yeah. can just start talking and getting to know them, and and uh, and being a good friend. Yeah, I agree. It just it just seems like really a perfect thing to teach kids about that, and I think everything just from their, you know, the type of animals that they are, their the difference in size, yeah. That they are, and how they, you know, and how what that means about how they deal with the world or interact with the world, and it's it's still it's is yeah, mm-hmm. just me- meaningful, and and I'm with you, really, really, uh, like good lessons, right? Just good, good, good life lessons from this yeah. film. And so Ernest and Celestine kind of bunker down in this little cabin, cottage type thing, and he wants to be on stage someday, but they keep shutting him down. And they they want him to to be a judge because I guess his his father and brothers were judges, but he doesn't want to do that. <laughs> and that was sweet. That was cute. I yeah. think a lot of people would be able to relate to that. In the meantime, there's this whole manhunt going on, looking for Ernest and Celestine. They can't find them, and uh, they have this van. And they basically paint it in, they paint it green. It was red uh, so that it will blend in with the forest. 
and uh, and it certainly does blend in. It becomes it's like an invisible fan. Yeah, it's like this. Yeah, which is so fun. Yeah, it's really cute. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. That's really cute. But then they crash the car into the store, into the, the candy store. So, the poor candy store. I know, poor <laughs> well, I guess store. poor Ernest and Celestine too, right? With the interactions <laughs> with the candy store too. <laughs> right. Yes. And and then we get both. That like I said, there's sort of this parallel journey of there's the um, the bears, police officers, and the and the mice, police officers, and uh, they they both storm the house, and so. I like it how Celestine is taken by the bear people and uh, characters and the, and Ernest is taken by the mouse characters Yeah, and, uh, and then also put on trial for their, uh, in the opposite trial, but both of the trials are basically the same, the same. Yeah. Yeah. They both have the same prejudices. Yeah. Mm hmm. And, uh, and so they go on trial and I, I liked, uh, when, um, they, the, the one, the one, uh, at, at Ernest's trial and the one at Ernest's trial, he says, says, worst of all, you frighten our children. He says, do I frighten you? And all the mice like, ah, <laughs> <Except for Celestine. laughs> and, and then you have Celestine saying, all I'm guilty of is being friends with a bear. Mm hmm. Just very, very sweet. Yeah, very sweet. And uh, and I think it would be if I had kids. Like I think this would be uh, a good lesson of sometimes, sometimes uh, we should. It's not always the easiest to be friends with everybody. Sometimes we have to work at it. Sometimes yeah. there's challenges, and uh, and so I think that's a good good message for kids, and and then the. Uh, Ernest's trial goes up in flames at first, and then that affects Celestine's trial. It also goes up in in flames, but they both save the judges yeah. in their respective trials. Exactly. They both are rescue rescue the judges, and that's just a kind of a, yeah. a fun turn of events, mm. too. Yes, it's very, very sweet. And I really I enjoyed the uh the music along with too. of course we talked about the animation, but um, Vincent Cortez is the uh, is the composer, and it looks like he's done a ton of French movies. So that's uh, I thought he did a really good job. Yeah, very I good music. The music a yeah, lot. yeah. And then they tell everybody they say all that we want is to be together, and. And you also don't see that many examples of just purely platonic friendship in mm-hmm. in movies. And I wish there was more of it uh, because I think it's a, an important uh, aspect of a lot of people's lives. I mean, you know, it's just like at us, like we're platonic friends. Yeah. And I, I think that can be a really valuable relationships in our, our lives is yeah. to have, you know, and you just almost never see it on screen. It's true. And, and that is that both of them express that as their only wish. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that, yeah, I'm with you. You just don't, you, you just don't see it a lot. And it's a, it's a beautiful and a meaningful thing for mm-hmm. this, you know, again, for this darling movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think what was the, uh, 
feel like there was a movie not too long ago about platonic friendship. And I was like, that was so refreshing. I got to go what it was, but yeah, it's really nice when you, when you get it every, every now and then. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that you can, uh, because I mean, at least for me in my life, I've had way more experience with that than romantic relationships. So it's a nice, it's nice to see it on screen every now and then, but and then uh, also kind of, and then also unlikely. Friend. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I also, I love that too. Mm-hmm. And we, t- we tend to see a lot. I've noticed that we've had an, a lot of like bromance style movies mm-hmm. uh, of unlikely friendship. It seems like you see that a lot. Like, I mean, I don't know. There's just movies like green book and things like that. I mean, you're sort of these yes. unlikely friendships and stuff and uh, you see that, but, uh, but you tend to not be male, female, which is, is nice about, about this. And, uh, and, I think you could have a lot of really good discussions with your kids and, and uh, also just the whole thing of Celestine being inspired by her art and to start drawing. And you, you really, there's a lot of scenes where they kind of go back and you see the start of the drawing in the animation. Yeah. Which I thought was beautiful. And, uh, and I, I think that could be fun for kids to kind of experiment with, uh, with their own, Draw, drawing styles and uh and just be inspired to have somebody first for Ernest to just believe in Celestine so well is very sweet yeah. mm-hmm. and so the the movie ends with Celestine Celestine telling their story and so the, she's she's the one that's animated it basically is the idea which, again, which is so cute it's so cute yeah <laughs> i'm like the one note review is like this is the cutest movie ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah this movie is really cuddly it's really sweet and it's you know it's only eight, it's like 80 minutes long so if you're if you just want some artistry some friendship uh some nice music then some good voice acting performances. I think this is just a really nice little choice. And like I said, it's on Tubi. So you don't even, it's free. Yeah. And the, just, you know, the, the hand drawn animation is, is totally worth mm-hmm. checking out. If that's something that you enjoy, because yeah. it's just the opposite of what we get. And of course I love, don't get me wrong. You know, I love Pixar and, you know, Disney so much, but this, this is such a visual change from that and just so refreshing. It just, again, just feels like a warm blanket or you're just kind of cuddled up with your favorite book, you know, sort of deal. Yeah. And I just noticed that the director, Stephen Aubier, he did a town called panic. Oh, okay. That was his previous film. And if you know a town called panic, but uh, it's all done through like, toys stop motion it's very very silly and very funny i don't think have we done that for obscure animation no but we should we should i've done it for criterion project over there a while okay. back but uh but yeah we should because it's it's hilarious i love it <laughs> so you can well, and you I'm can aware see of it, but i don't think i've ever seen it all right? oh, okay all, at least all the way through so yeah i mean it's very silly yeah very very silly like there's this joke in it with the one character horse has this girlfriend and and he makes a a date to go to her dance thing or whatever and he he she doesn't think he'll come and they get on this whole journey and throughout the whole journey every time he picks up a phone it's her being like are you gonna be there (laughs) you're like in the ocean pick up the phone (laughs) <laughs> which is so funny <laughs> and that's the kind of ridiculous antics that's in it's very it's very funny so i can see you can see some of that humor in here especially with Ernest and his sort of sarcasm and yeah and, uh, and so and the idea is this is supposed to be like bonnie and clyde for kids is how they advertised it you know with like the 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 um, yeah like the mug shots mug shot yeah that's it but with obviously without the like romantic element of Bonnie and Clyde but yeah it's really cute some let me I had some thoughts oh, on some, some uh, Twitter comments yes yeah, just one sec outstanding <laughs> let's see here okay from your awesome followers 
Yes, very. They're so nice. We survived Twitter, the Twitter apocalypse. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, uh, we have our friend Cameron. He says it's it's lush watercolor visual style mixed with creative old cinema style antics results in one of the animation world's most wholesome duos. It's also adorable from head to toe. We agree. And, yep. uh, and then uh, we have my friend, Kevin, uh, I critic. He says, uh, watching this movie is like watching a classic children's book come to life with humor and heart radiating from the screen. I love it. So there we go. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> Yes. So let us know what you think of this movie in the comments section or on Twitter. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And Stanford, where can people find you? On Twitter. At least for the time being. On Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at Stanford Clark. And I have a movie <laughs> podcast and blog at moviespastandpresent.com. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Round Tomatoes. So check that out. Got lots of animated reviews uh i have the review my review on my blog for the for the uh gil uh, toro pinocchio so you definitely want to check that out uh first i'm gonna have it for strange world and we're gonna be covering that for talking disney pretty soon uh so you'll definitely want to be following that and and if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the patron group, which is a lot of fun. And you get a chance to contribute to the to the podcast and uh, check out Hallmarkies podcast. I'm really proud of everything we're doing over there, especially if you want some holiday coverage. We got everything going there. And we also have the merch store where you can get hashtag animation junkie shirts. So you definitely want to check that out. And uh, thanks so much. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Hey, bye. <laughs>